day, uh, a young boy was traveling with his grandparents, and they were caught in a terrible storm. There was wind and rain and thunder and hail. Grandfather covered the horse's head with a sack and tied the frightened animal to a tree. That's probably not a good idea, is it? But anyway, that's what he did. <laughs> the family took shelter under the wagon. Grandfather dug a shallow hole in the earth, put in a fistful of tobacco, and prayed for the safety of his wife and grandson. So the storm passed without doing them any harm. Then he said to the boy, go to bed and cover yourself well. We will have a strange little visitor tonight. Don't look at him. That's important. <laughs> Quickly the boy prepared for bed, and the elders covered him with a blanket. They tucked it around him so tightly that he could not move. Then they pulled it up over his head. Afterwards, they covered themselves, too. But the boy found he was able to peek out through a small hole in the blanket. He lay there for a long time, wondering who his grandparents were expecting. At last, the stranger stepped into view. The boy was surprised to see a tiny man with a brown, wrinkled face and small, bright eyes. His hair was long and uncombed. He wore deerskin skirts wrapped around his waist. It hung to his knees. His feet and head were bare. The little man went right to where the elders were sleeping and put his hand on the woman's shoulder. Please, he said softly, I would like to have some food. Quickly, the woman got up and gave him some deer meat and, and dried fish. But the man did not want to eat. Please put the food in a bundle, he said. I'm taking it to my people. So she wrapped the food carefully, and the little man carried it away. The next morning, the boy's face was puffed up so big that he couldn't open his eyes. The grandfather said, I told you not to look at our visitor. Now you have been warned. They were unable to travel because of the boy's condition, so they slept in that place again. That night, the little man returned and asked the woman for more food. This time, the boy didn't try to look at the visitor. But before the man left with the food, he stood near the boy and whistled softly until the boy went to sleep. In the morning, he was fully recovered. For the rest of his life, the boy would hear that tiny whistle and know that little people were nearby. Then he put out small baskets of fish or dried berries for them to take. In the morning, it would all be gone. Sometimes a small feather of friendship or a shiny stone of appreciation would be left where the basket of generosity had been. Then it happened, when the man had reached the third hill of his earth journey, that he came upon the body of a little man laying on a flat rock. The well-formed body was dark and wrinkled. It was wrapped in a short deerskin skirt. Immediately, he recognized the little man he'd seen in his grandparents' camp so many years before. The man had never heard of anyone who had been permitted to witness such a thing, and it frightened him to be chosen for such an honor. He did not speak of this event until he himself had grown quite old. Whenever he told this story, he put a handful of tobacco down in front of him so those who heard him would know he spoke the truth. They say when he was preparing to go over to the other side, the little people came to help him along. Although no one saw them, their tiny whistles came up out of the tall grass around the village. Therefore, the mourners knew that many little people were present. The elders believed that all the little people the man had fed while he lived had come to encourage him as he set off upon his last journey. <laughs>